is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world, sure enough, can't take it away because I won't let them take it away. Oh, good morning, St. Mark. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Oh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 21. And it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. When, as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought of these things, behold, a angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And I'd like to take focus on verse number 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And I would like to preach on the subject this morning, why is Jesus so special to me? Why is Jesus so special to me? Let's pray. Our gracious, our eternal God, whom the earth and the fullness there belong and all that dwells within. My gracious God, I come to you as humble as I can. First of all, to say thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. And God, I just, just want to thank you for everything in advancement for what you're going to do, God. What you gonna do in my life? What you gonna do in the saints of, of God's life this morning, God? And God, I just ask you, God, to hide me behind the cross and you come forward so that the people of God won't say, Reverend McCoy, you did a good job this morning, but now, God, you showed up and you showed out again this morning, this first Sunday in December. Oh, God, I just ask you now to purposely locate me to the yielding of your anointing. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. Why is Jesus so special to me? Jesus. 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 There's something about that name. Master, Savior Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus. 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 Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will pass away. But there is something about that name. My beloved Bill Gather sang his song. There's something about that name would have us to know that there's no other name like the name of Jesus. And Kara Job sings a song. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. Well, there's something about that name. My beloved, during this celebrative and most decorative season of the year, even though COVID-19 is in an uprise, jobs are few. We still should sing, Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Oh, won't you listen to the angels sing, glory, glory to the newborn king. We sing of him, we applaud him, we acclaim him. Oh, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diamonds and crown him Lord of all. My beloved, 
Countless are the songs we have heard sung of Jesus. All who were raised Deacon Curtis in a Christian home can testify of having heard his name called since they were old enough to remember. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, our mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers told us about Jesus. Oh, they applied pressure on us to know Jesus. To them was the unquestionable answer to every situation. Now, my beloved, you remember back in the day, they had the mourner's bench. <laughs> if you had not given your life to Jesus, uh, you were called out to come up front and kneel on the first bench. They call it the mourner's bench. The saints would gather around you and pray and sing and praise and pray and sing and praise. They would inadvertently, Deacon Curtis, spit on you. Now, with this COVID-19 going on, you better not be spitting on nobody. Your, your, your praise and your prayers will be messed up, I'll tell you. You might, be, but you might need prayer when they come up off, your, off their, your knees. Watch how you spit on people. You were on your knees. You were hot and sweaty because everyone was standing around you uh, praying, singing, and praising. They were re relentless, urging you, compelling you to give your life to Jesus. Oh, you need Jesus is what they were saying. They weren't talking about prosperity, apostle. They were talking about Jesus. Their agenda was not entrepreneurship or economic empowerment. Their only agenda was Jesus. Sometimes persons will stay down at the mourner bench until they cry out. I yield. I yield. I can't hold out any longer. Give me Jesus. My beloved, the elder saints will want us to know Jesus. They wanted us to know there was nothing or no one was more important than Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Why is Jesus so important to me? My beloved, all my life, I have heard preachers say with emphasis, He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the water of life. He's the bread of life. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Although we didn't understand what those titles actually meant, we will respond with a resounding amen. Oh, we really didn't understand what the preacher meant when he or she said he's a mother for the motherless and a father for the fatherless. But we will stand up and clap our hands and say amen. But my beloved, obviously there was something special about Jesus. Oh, I submit to you this morning that that, that, is, that, that, that you that, who are watching, by the way, of Facebook or YouTube, uh, that what was still is. Uh, however special he was then, he is just as special to you right now. Whatever the reason was for you needing Jesus, then we sure do, do need him more now than ever. My beloved, it scares me to think of someone trying to raise a child in this crazy world. In this day without Jesus, that's almost inhuman. Deacon Curtis, I feel so strongly about it that I wish someone would pass a law that it's a criminal offense to try to raise a child without Jesus. My beloved, there's nothing or no one is more vital or valuable to human existence than Jesus. Oh, there's something about that name. I believe it is true that demons tremble at the name of Jesus. My beloved, why is Jesus special to me? Deacon Curtis, can I tell you why he's special to me? I ain't gonna tell you until you say, ask me why. 
Well, I'm going to tell you why then, and this brings me to the first point of the text. He is so special because he pre-existed prior to being born. <laughs> My beloved, before time and before place, Jesus was with God, and God existed in the bosom of his father behind the curtain, curtain of eternity. When the heavens and the earth was created, fish of the sea, fowls of the air, beasts of the field, Jesus was there. When God looked around at the heavenly host and said, let us make man, Jesus was there. My beloved, the life of Jesus did not begin on some back street. Jesus was with God in the beginning before the beginning began. John tells us in his gospel in chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was a word and the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Oh, are you praying with me this morning? In him was life. And the life was the light of men. He was in the world and the world knew him not. He came into his own and his own received him not. The word was made flesh in Jesus and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. Oh, and no one has ever invaded planet Earth like Jesus. He was the ancient of days, became a infant in a manger. No hospital bed, no hospital ward, no nurse assistant, no labor room or a crib. Oh, but a cattle through a lowly manger with the stench of a cattle in his nostril. Oh, having hung, hung out its brightest star and led the wise men from the east to Jerusalem. The angelic preacher and heavenly choir stopped by the Judean hills with breaking news. For the shepherds who were watching their flock night, glory to God the highest. Jesus pre-existed prior to being born. God made a woman from a man in Eve and then turned around and made a man from a woman in Jesus. <laughs> oh, my beloved, in other words, God took a motherless woman from the body of man in creation and then took a fatherless man from the body of a woman all in redemption. Oh, are you praying with me this morning? Jesus pre-existed before he was born. The Jews were one day inquiring of Jesus as who he was and from whence he had come. And Jesus told them that his presence date back to the other side of Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, I am. And this brings me to the second point of the text this morning. Not only is Jesus special to me because he pre-existed before being born, but secondly, no one, <laughs> I said no one can compare to Jesus. My beloved, he doesn't have an equal. There has never been nor is a, 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 a duplicate of Jesus. He can't be duplicated. Look at his perfection. He is the perfect one. My beloved, with so many flaws, failures, blemishes, defects, weaknesses, shortcomings, and faults in all humanity, it is difficult for us to comprehend one who is absolutely perfect in every detail of his life. Jesus Christ is the perfect one. There was no flaw in his life, no blemish in his character, no spot in his purity, no doubt in his devotion, no untruth in his testimony, no ugliness in his attitude, no meanness in his disposition, 
No mark in his reputation. Oh, no speck in his eye. No regret in his past. No softness in his actions. No deceit in his lips. No greed in his spirit. No weaknesses in his will. No jealousy in his bones. No hatred in his heart. No fault in his faithfulness. He was the perfect one. Satan did everything in his power to corrupt Jesus and to stop Jesus from building his kingdom. Oh, but, uh, oh, I said, but in every instance, in every circumstance, in every test, Jesus proved to be faithful and perfect. Oh, my beloved, time and time again, Satan tried to cast blemish against his perfection. Satan planned to plot his evil designs against Jesus, but always to no avail. Sin could not entice him. Doubt could not defeat him. Fear could not frustrate him. Burdens could not bewilder him. Demons could not defile him. Evil could not enfold him. My beloved, Time and time again, Satan tried, but opposition couldn't oppress him. Pain couldn't persuade him. Greed couldn't enslave him. Troubles couldn't panic him. Temptation could not attract him. The enemies could not intimidate him. Persecution could not deter him. Suffering could not shake him. Death could not hold him. And the grave could not hold him. Oh, my beloved. And this is why the text says, and his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. It takes a perfect savior to redeem an imperfect humanity. It takes a perfect savior to whom no one compares, or who can forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, it takes a perfect savior who in all points were tempted like we are, but without sin. Oh, it takes a perfect savior despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, to look beyond all of our faults and see my needs. Oh, it takes a perfect savior, Deacon Curtis, to be wounded <laughs> to be wounded for our transgressions. Oh, bruised for our iniquities. For the chastisement of, of, of our peace is laid upon his shoulders so that by his stripes we could be healed. Oh, it takes a perfect savior. Oh, it takes a perfect savior to climb up Golgotha Hill with a heavy cross on his shoulders. End up with a crucifixion on Calvary. Suffered blood for my sins. For me. For me. For me. And for you. <laughs> oh, my beloved. Can I just pause? <laughs> Can I just pause here for a moment? Just to thank Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to just thank God right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I adore you. Oh, I praise you, Jesus. Jesus is special to me because no one compares to Jesus. Well, my beloved, this brings me to the third and final point of the text this morning. There is a question. Where is he? And my beloved, Every other religion in the world, there is a certainty about the physical whereabouts of its founder. The founder 
Buddhism, Buddha lived, and Buddha died. And the whereabouts of his remains are known. The founder of Confucianism, Kung Fu Tzu, known as Confucius, lived and died. And the whereabouts of his remains are known. The founder of Islam, the prophet Muhammad, lived and died. And the whereabouts of his remains are known. But uh, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, the founder of Christian religion, go to the grave of Jesus, and you will hear the echo of the angels say, he is not here, but has arisen. You see, philosophers have not been able to define the empty tomb. Biologists have not been able to detail the origination and destination. Archaeologists have not been able to unearth any remains and artifacts and Torrens have not been able to chronicle the time zone of the disappearance at the tomb. And theologians have not been able to explain what and how it happened. Well, my beloved, I got to get out of here now. But uh, the reason Jesus is special to me is because nobody, <laughs> I said nobody, has been able to answer the question, where is he? Where is his mortal remains? Why can't anyone locate his corpse? Paul, oh, Jesus is special to me, apostle, because early, early, early on the third day morning, I said early on the third day morning, he got up, he got up, I said he got up, he got up with all power in his hand. Not some power, but all power in his hands. I tell you this morning, he's special because we have third day faith. Thank God Almighty for third day faith. You might be down right now, but third day faith lets you know that you're going to get up. You might be sick in your body right now. But third day faith lets you know that you are healed. You might be jobless or you might be homeless. But third day faith says that he will provide all your needs. You might can't see a way right now. But third day faith tell you that he will make a way. Because he's a, a way maker. Oh! Get up! Get up! Get up! with third day faith. Tell the devil, if you're not too scared, if you're not too scared, tell the devil, I got third day faith and I'm going to get up. This is why Jesus is so special to me, is because, is because I have third day faith. And he got up on the third day with all power, not some power, not maybe power, not sometimes power, but all, all, all power. I'm done. Third day faith. God bless you. If there's one today, don't know why Jesus Christ is special to you. All you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died and he arose on the third day with all power. Then the Bible says 
you shall be saved. As stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, if this church has been a blessing to you and God has placed in your heart a desire to give, here are a few different ways for you to do so. First, you can go to the church website at stmartbaptist.org, click on the donations tab at the top, and follow the prompts. You will be directed to our donations page, which will give you the options to donate by debit card or PayPal account. Secondly, you can visit us in person at 4118 State Highway 34 East. That's Ridgeway, South Carolina. Someone will be available Tuesday through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Due to COVID-19, we are practicing all social distancing guidelines, which includes the wearing of masks and other face coverings. Please abide by these guidelines along with us. Thirdly, you may mail your offering in to the church. Address it to St. Mark Baptist Church, 4118 State Highway 34 East. That's Ridgeway, South Carolina, 29130. Thank you in advance for your support of St. Mark Baptist Church. God bless.